JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, policeman killed in motor vehicle collision. A policeman from above rocks in St. Catherine died as a result of injuries he sustained in a motor vehicle crash on the Rock Hall Main Road in St. Andrew on Saturday, September 19. The deceased has been identified as 29-year-old Kamal Foster. According to the police, Foster was riding his under CBR motorcycle towards Above Rock when on reaching a section of the roadway, he collided with a Nissan motor car that was heading in the opposite direction. Foster and the driver of the motor car were assisted to a hospital where Foster was pronounced dead. The driver has been warned for prosecution. Man nabbed by police after months on the run. A St. Catherine man accused of disobeying a signal to stop at a police checkpoint and defying at the police as he fled in May of this year has been arrested and charged by detectives in the St. Catherine North Division after months on the run. The man, 23-year-old Carlos Crawford of Taws Meadows, St. Catherine, has been charged with shooting with intent, discharge firearm to prevent arrest, illegal possession of firearm, illegal possession of of ammunition driving motor vehicle without owner's consent. Reports are that about 8.15 p.m. on Sunday, May 24, Crawford was signaled to stop at a checkpoint. He, however, disobeyed and sped off. A police team attempted to intercept him. However, he fired at them. The lawmen, in a bid to preserve the safety of persons in the area, curbed their initial efforts and Crawford escaped. Investigations continued. And on Tuesday, September 1, a team of officers conducted operations in Todd's Meadows in the parish and Crawford was nabbed. Man wanted for murder among two shot dead in St. Anne. A man who was being sought for questioning in relation to a murder last year was among two persons who were shot dead in separate incidents in St. Anne on Friday. The deceased men have been identified as Tyrone McFarlane, of Mansfield Heights, Ocharias, and Clifford Gallimore, otherwise called King, of an unknown address in St. Anne. In the first incident, it was reported that sometime after 7 a.m., explosions were heard coming from a section of Mansfield Heights. The police were alerted, and on their arrival, McFarland's bullet-riddled body was found lying face down at his home. He was taken to a hospital where his death was confirmed. Police investigators in the Garden Parish were kept busy on the day as they were later summoned to the scene of another murder. It was reported that about 12.30 p.m. gunshots were heard coming from a section of the lower Buxton area. Residents then summoned the police. On their arrival, Gallimore was found with gunshot wounds. He was pronounced dead at hospital. According to sources, Gallimore was being sought by the police in relation to the murder of a man in Orange Hill in the parish in June of last year. He, however, fled the area and had not been located by law enforcers. Five shot on Collie Smith Drive in Kingston. Five persons were shot and injured during an attack by gunmen on Collie Smith Drive in Kingston Sunday evening. The five persons, including a woman, were at a bingo party shortly after 7 o'clock when men open gunfire on them, they have been hospitalized. Probe underway after human remains found in St. Thomas. A probe is underway following the discovery of human skeletal remains in Springfield, Barking, St. Thomas. The body believed to be that of 51-year-old Ian Davis was found on Saturday. About 4.30 p.m., Mr. Davis's relatives went to his house. They found the skeletal remains in bushes about 25 meters from his house. It was reported that Mr. Davis was the last seen alive about 5 p.m. on September 11. Multi-million dollar program to help reposition small operations in tourism industry. The government is rolling out a 100 million Jamaican dollars program to reposition small operators in the tourism industry. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says the funds will be channeled through the National Export-Import Bank of Jamaica. The bank is administering 
a grant to support program of $1.2 billion to assist tourism-related businesses with capacity building, among other COVID-19 pandemic recovery efforts, as the sector prepares for the upcoming winter tourist season. Mr. Bartlett says small investors in tourism can access loans ranging between 5 to $25 million at 4% interest and are payable over seven years through the Tourism Enhancement Fund. Principals reject October 5 in-person classes. School administrators are opposed to face-to-face -face classes come September 5, even as the Education Ministry is contemplating whether some institutions could have normal operations amid a deadly wave of COVID-19. The Favel Williams-led ministry said on Friday that it was fashioning a vulnerability index to assess school reopening based on geoinformatics, demographics, and health data. The plan, according to the ministry, would include varied approaches, including face-to-face -face class engagement and remote learning. The Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, and the Jamaica Association of Principals of Secondary Schools, JAPS, have representatives on the newly established e-COVID-19 task force examining ways for the education sector to function amid the coronavirus. However, the heads of both associations are making it clear that the proposal to have face-to-face -face schooling resume is a non-starter. President of JAPS, Linvern Wright, said that his group would be adverse to the proposed paradigm. This is in light of the obvious spikes in deaths and infections associated with COVID-19, he said. The formula for selective reopening is flawed, given that Jamaica is an interconnected country. We have no faith in the formula grounded in geoinformatics and believe that using such a formula is ill-advised, right charged. President of the JTA, Jasford Gabriel, so that while you understood the value of face-to-face -face classes, the technicalities and the complications made it almost impossible to accomplish at this time. We think that the risk factor is far, far greater than if we were to continue online. We watch what is happening with the rising cases with the pandemic, Gabriel said. We still have to remember that when the first case was identified on March 10, we closed the school system. Now we're having cases in the region of 200 per day, and so on. That pronouncement referred to the disclosure by the Ministry of Health and Wellness that a one-day record high, seven people had died from COVID-19 on Saturday. Total deaths are now 70, while infections are over 5,000. Juliet Wilson, a 25-year career educator who was vice principal of Kingston College and who had reportedly contracted the disease, died on the weekend. Weighing on the suggestion that schools in low-risk areas be allowed to reopen, the JTA president pointed out that many students often travel from distant communities to attend school. Gabriel suggested that online learning continue despite the challenges with internet access for some students. Our teachers are far more prepared for online with tablets and the training on the learning management systems. The ministry has done a fantastic job with that. Schools have been getting help from partners to get more devices and gadgets for the students, he said. Wright, who is principal of William Nib High, said that Jobs principals believe that too many critical factors are being ignored, including the diverse areas served by schools, the intermingling that takes place on transportation, and the fact that school districts are not zoned to facilitate efficient management of infection rates. Nadine Malloy, principal of Arden High School, is also not in agreement with in-person classes anytime soon. I refuse to sanction putting the staff and students to this kind of exposure, Malloy, a former president of the JTA, said. And the principal of Cumberland High, Darren Henry, was also critical of the ministry's reopening strategy. He called the proposal, which is reliant on GIS mapping, dangerous, risky, and ill-advised. Schools should only be opened when the community spread of COVID-19 has dissipated with significantly reduced risk to all our stakeholders. Now is not the time to be fancy with GIS mapping technology, said Henry. 
and JBN. We keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.